Mikoy, this is a difficult subject. I mean, for me at least, it is. TRL, NASA's TRL scale. Um, we use it, a lot of companies use it, a lot of institutions use it. Um, and it's quite maybe simple in its um, primal form, sort of, in its primal use. But as it went out to a wider audience, it became a bit difficult. So maybe let's start with a simple summary. What is the TRL scale originally and what it is in practice in the industrial design sort of branch today? Okay. Uh, so from the beginning, starting from, from the NASA, uh, yeah. which is, uh, which is that place that the TRL scale was, uh, uh, established, mm, it was primarily used and it is used for new technologies, for new upcoming ideas yeah. that are going to be technologies used in space industry. And w w what does it apply to those new technologies? It helps to say at what stage of development this technology is. Yes, uh, how ready this technology is to deploy in space mission. Yeah, so TRL actually stands for Technology Readiness, readiness level. level. Yeah, indeed. And um, like you said, it's about technologies, but we use it, and like I said, many co other companies and public institutions use it to describe stages of a product's development, sort of. Yes. So how does it transcribe to product development? And that's not the easy part. Yeah. Not, not, that's not the easiest part of, uh, of description because it's um, one of many frameworks that uh, design studios or even companies without a focus on design are using mm. because this framework is today I thought about it yeah. uh, is some kind of a an approach on how to describe an iterative process yeah. in a waterfall manner okay so that you know that developing a technology needs some iterations it needs prototyping it needs development it needs time to be um, to be uh, made from an idea mm -hmm. from a spark of an idea in someone's head up to finished technology or a product so if you try to describe this loop uh, of iterative process yeah in some uh, kind of a waterfall manner you can use TRL scale yeah so th theoretically like an, an agile way of work agile methodology is opposite to waterfall right but here, yes. Agile is sort of described within waterfall stages, sort uh, of? That's my interpretation, of course. Yeah. But, uh, but I believe that it, it makes sense because uh, once you reach a, a milestone in your, uh, in your product development stage, mm. you can call that it has reached a uh, certain uh, TRL level, TR yeah. level, <laughs> yeah. um, because uh, when we speak about the ideas, it's TRL1, so it's just, as it's stated, basic principles, uh, just a concept, just a concept, uh, some, some invention that, that is, uh, you know, sparking another ideas in mm -hmm. in your head this is the readiness number one so yeah. we have only the idea uh, and if we jump through the steps of tr mm -hmm. uh, scale we get more and more uh, developed yeah. uh, ideas that are translating into technologies and uh, eventually into products so what's at the end of the scale number one is the first step 
And the last step is? The last step is uh, a technology, because we are speaking still about the, uh, the, the basic uh, definition of, yeah. of TRL. Uh, the last step, it's, it's called uh, TRL number nine. It's the actual system that is proven uh, in space mission. Uh, so it's not a prototype, it's already been prototyped, tested, and it works. It's a working, proven uh, solution. Um, yes, but uh, I think that putting prototype in this scale yeah. is, might be a bit confusing for now, because when we start thinking about um, you know, space technologies, yeah. I believe that these products are one in a one of a kind one of a kind yeah so these are actually prototypes yeah okay. because they're not pre prepared for mass production yes. right but they are very well documented prototypes mm. they are very well uh, uh, developed um, they are measured they are um, sort of proven that in real life, in the real mission, that they mm -hmm. need to serve robustly um, for, for the whole time of the mission. Mm -hmm. People are certain that this thing, this technology, mm -hmm. will work yeah. for them. So this is TRL number nine. nine. So um, before we get into uh, each of the stages, what do you suppose was the initial um, need for such a scale outside of NASA's use? So why did institutions and industrial design companies, engineering companies, mm -hmm. why did they jump on this scale and adapt it to product development? A good question. I believe that the problem was with misunderstanding of what the design people say and what do clients uh, understand. Okay, so sort of uh, uh, difference between expectations of both sides? Definitely, yes. Because when we say prototype, I've got several types of yeah. prototypes in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can speak about prototypes in different... Uh, yeah, we in, actually in had a talk about prototypes with Anita, uh, uh, about uh, it, a, a prototype being one of the uh, words, phrases, definitions that are, that can be confusing because people sort of intuitively sometimes explain to themselves what a prototype is. And like you said, you as a designer and as an engineer, you have several types of prototypes you work with. And people outside of the design world or engineering world, they think that a prototype, for example, is a master copy of a device and it can be just duplicated in mass production easily. Yes, and that's why uh, some institutions, uh, including the European Union yeah. uh, and uh, the, centers, the national centers of research and development, like in, in Poland, for example, are using this scale because they tend to uh, describe this, uh, the, the level of development of a product mm. within this scale. Mm. So it's some kind of a translation from uh, understanding the technology mm. readiness into the product development readiness level. Yeah. Um, and okay, I think it's, uh, it's a good scale so that um, you can understand on what type of prototype are we speaking about. Yeah. Because I believe that a TRL scale might be only used for the prototyping stages. It's not the scale that might be implemented into the product, uh, the mass production of mm -hmm. the product or the production. Yeah. Um, so, uh, after TRL9, there is the production stage. Yes, yeah. definitely, yes. Because you've mentioned about the master copy. Yeah. Um, 
it's usually described as the golden sample, golden sample. Uh, prototype, and it's uh, one of uh, the method used while introducing something new to the manufacturer, to the vendor. Mm. Because you can say that you've got the whole bunch of papers with drawings, with uh, all the tolerances, uh, yeah. surface finishes, um, it, it, these technology papers like uh, how to make this part specifically, mm -hmm. how to meet standards that you need to meet that, mm -hmm. or your product mm -hmm. needs. Um, but all this stuff is a bit confusing when you don't see the actual sample of the product. Yeah. It might be confusing. Of course, uh, there are companies that are very experienced in this area, so the drawing says more than everything. But uh, preparation of this drawing is very difficult because mm. you have to know that this language that you use in the drawing is understandable by both sides. And sometimes when uh, a designer makes this drawing, he means something different making this drawing. Um, and the, the one who reads this drawing still yeah. wants something more or less. It's like reading emotions through emails. Yes, <laughs> definitely yes. And while you have the golden sample, the prototype that already looks like the product, mm. you can say, you know, I want something like this. Yeah. But I want this to be manufactured in a manner that is efficient, that is economically yeah. uh, satisfying for me, and my clients yeah. will eventually buy it. And that is described in these papers. But this is what we're going to achieve. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, so, so this was, uh, if I understand you correctly, this probably was um, incorporated into the design world and, uh, and the product development world in order to make sure all sides of each project uh, stand on the same ground and understand each other correctly regarding any confusing um, elements, processes or whatever. Yes. Okay, and you say the scale is uh, is good. So let's um, let's go through it uh, because it was intended for technology, not a product. And you've mentioned that the first level is this, this sort of spark an idea for for a technology. <clears throat> so does this transcribe to like having an idea for a pro for a product? Uh, yes, you can call it like this, or uh, you can call it like. I've got a bunch of technologies or a bunch of, ma of materials uh, already on the market, but I don't know what to do with them. Mm. And I've got an idea to use ceramic material. Uh, of course, it's a retrospective because it is on the market. So mm -hmm. I, I just want uh, our listeners to, to understand it by example. Yeah. So um, for several decades, uh, for example, watches mm -hmm. um, were made out of metal. Yeah. And some time ago, um, one company and another came up with an idea to make a ceramic bracelet. Okay. So there was a ceramic material that is scratch resistant. It's extremely scratch resistant. It's um, quite beautiful in the appearance. Mm -hmm. So two factors that are really important in, yeah, with in, watches. in watches, especially in this high, um, high quality and expensive watches. So they've made a statement that it's possible or probable that um, ceramics might be used uh, when pr manufacturing bracelets. But of course, it was just an idea. Yeah. Um, how to make it? This is another topic. Okay. So um, this idea came from uh, this level of readiness, like mm -hmm. number one, we have an idea, into uh, several rounds of um, prototyping, testing, um, and developing this idea into mm -hmm. final, for example, bracelet. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, at the very first stage, we have this uh, uh, idea, 
And once we come up with it, what's what's the process of getting to stage two? Like, what, what's the, that would be the first step to make? Um, actually, I probably merged these two because there is an idea. Yeah. And the step number two is an idea how to merge it <laughs> into something. Okay. So, so, so the idea of application. Okay. So first, you uh, with the technology uh, uh, use of the scale. First, you have just an idea, then you sort of come up with an application for it. Mm -hmm. For example, you, you come up with some, some gizmo and then you think, hey, I don't know, fishermen might want to use it. So that's the second sort of stage? Yes, this is the second, because you, to further develop this technology, you have to have some kind of a target group. Yeah. So you, you need to know who is going to benefit uh, your idea yeah. with your idea. So, f for example, the, um, the technology might just have been introduced or mm -hmm. it might be just an invention or discover, because it's not an invention, mm -hmm. it's a discover of chemical element. Okay. So you have a chemical element that you don't know what to do with. Okay. But it has some properties that are promising mm -hmm. within particular area of technologies. Okay. So you are trying to focus on this element, on how to apply this into your um, into your sort of market that yeah. you want to, to target. Or, or, you, or you just come up with a market that might find it useful. So yes, you, this might be a chemical element, like in a sense of technology and, re, and inventions like that, but it can be, it doesn't need to be, uh, when we speak about product development, um, it doesn't have to be an invention of something totally new, but for example, of a combination of some things that brings a new effect to life. Definitely, yes, because um, I believe that innovation is not so frequent um, when considering something really totally new. Yeah. Unless the basic principles of science uh, would not change, I think that it's rarely possible yeah. to we've, invent something yeah, or we've, discover we've something. We've already discovered really so new. much that yeah. uh, further discoveries are well hidden. <laughs> yes, but we've got a lot of room and a lot of space for improvement mm -hmm. in already established markets because we learn from different uh, from different uh, markets from different special specializations that uh, ideas from one industry can be sometimes easily sometimes with uh, with difficulties with difficulties but applied into another industry and benefit the yes. people uh, and the, the people will benefit from yeah, these um, these innovations so Sometimes innovation is just merging one technology from uh, space industry, the technology from material science, and making, for example, um, the nanoparticles that will be uh, um, sprayed on your um, on your shower cabin. Yeah. And you are free to go with cleaning. And it. you no so longer have to clean it. Yes, yeah. you no longer uh, have to clean. Or at least. Clean rinse the water off. or or at least making it easier yeah. so th this wouldn't be possible with without someone who thought okay we've got this nanotechnology that is really awesome and it's helping people getting to the moon or to the mm -hmm. mars uh, it's helping um, in medicine why can't we make this technology affordable and place it into product yeah. that and consumer saves, products. Yes, yeah. that saves people's time. Yeah. And that's easy. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. So uh, after the initial spark and an idea of application of how to use this technology or solution invention, what's the, what's the next stage? The next stage is the proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, DTRL number three, mm -hmm. um, it's ends with a proof of concept so okay. you 
no longer have just an idea yeah. on how to make you it, need to... but you can prove it with a device or with a thing mm. that is physical, but not only, it can be a software, mm -hmm. because we are living yeah, in digital yeah. e era, so uh, innovations are not only uh, material, you can call it that there are atoms and there are bits. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, bits are also um, very important in our, in our life. So these ideas might also be soft, like software, mm. um, but, but really um, helpful in our life. So, so a proof of concept would be not already building the product, but just making sure that the idea and application that we had might be possible or plausible. Yes. Um, you can uh, you can understand it by putting all the different things that you think you need to build yeah into a proof of this concept like mm, so that's why uh, uh, prototyping platforms uh, happened like are they know like uh, Lego, mm. because Lego okay. is also very important. It's a prototyping, prototyping platform. Yes, it's a prototyping platform, <laughs> especially with Mindstorms uh, today. Um, uh, but you've got also this, these, langu these scripting lang uh, languages of programming, like Python, like uh, even, even more easy to learn those block... Um, like the no-code solutions? Like the, yes, no-code no, uh, no solutions. But you can easily prototype, prototype the, yeah. the concept that you think might work. Uh, and after the, this, this proof of concept, you know that this, would, this yeah. will work. But this is just a rough idea. Uh, it's not optimal. It's not optimized because you, you are using components that are definitely not uh, mm, for mass production yeah. and not for even manufacturing in a small scale because you take a lot of time you, you spend a lot of time of assembling these little puzzles into the idea that you think that might work i remember talking to uh, uh, rafael from our embedded electronics team uh, and he described what a proof of concept for them often is like even though the, the plan is to build like a small electronic device, let's say a wearable, then a proof of concept might be a quite big um, assembly of electronical parts and cables that are not neatly wired at all. It, it looks horrible, it's, it's not wearable at all, but it proves that it works, that the concept works, that such components combined together will work as intended. And then the rest of the process about, is about making it a small wearable. But the proof of concept yes. doesn't have to be uh, the right size, the, doesn't have to, write, to have the right, um, I don't know, energy consumption, heat uh, dissipation or whatever. It's just proving the basic concept, right? Yes. Um, I think that one of the best example might be, um, might be a touch screen. Okay. Because we are so used to the yeah. touch screens that they are embedded in our cell phones, in our even our watches, watches yeah. um, all the different devices that are already surrounding us. But the beginnings of the touch screens was that placing the some kind of, of matrix of a foil on the top of a mm, a big display. Yeah. It was clunky. It was impossible for a regular man to think of this technology that it can be deployed in this yeah, small in this device. Yeah. It took several years to, uh, to develop this technology and this started with an idea on how to make the interface more, yeah. you know, more friendly. And that's a good example of the difference, I think, between uh, technology readiness and product readiness uh, because what you just mentioned was an example of a technology right 
uh, it wasn't like someone was thinking how I could make a touch sensitive wristwatch. They were just thinking technology, like touch sensitive surface, screens, yes. whatever, right? And that technology was being developed. It, it went its own path of TRLs before some other people probably could be thinking about products that use this technology. And they started their own TRL loop, sort of. True. I think that, uh, that it's a good comparison, that, that the technology needs its own development path and the product needs its own development mm. path. Once you reach the level nine in TRL, you can see, you can search for this technology probably because, uh, because on early stages, like uh, up to, I think uh, up to number four, mm. this technology does not come out of a laboratory mm. because you've got these ideas so um, scientific, basically. Yeah, yeah, they are scientifically uh, difficult yeah. gen in general. So um, these are things that needs a special environment because for example nanoparticles which, which i mentioned mm -hmm. uh, before um on different of, of different materials but nanoparticles of metals are highly flammable for example okay so you need to have a special environment for them to make a research yeah to work on them because if you if you have if you make this at home uh, your home will be burned <laughs> yeah. probably because you will not know these small details about the material science and you will blow up yourself yeah. you guys need to remember that burning your house is not on the trl scale <laughs> <laughs> definitely um so jumping to the product when we have the technology already established mm -hmm. and already mm, well described and well developed, we can think of a product that utilizes this yeah. technology. So that's why the touch screen yeah. now is very popular, but it took a lot of time and a lot of different stages of development mm -hmm. to make these screens so thin and so invisible like the capacitive screen on your touch on, on your touch screen phone um, that you not only perceive it as okay it is yeah it is something is very something obvious is very obvious yeah. that that you have but someone and some company spent lots of money and lots and of time, time yeah to develop this technology so that you don't see it. Yeah, sure. So you've mentioned that uh, um, in the uh, original TRL, meaning a technology doesn't leave the laboratory uh, up until level four, I mean, after level four, right? So yes. we, we haven't talked about uh, level four yet. Yet, What would that be? Mm, this is the testing of the proof of concept. Like you, you think it works, but now you've got some testing procedure to okay. make. Okay. Is it robust, for so example? It, yeah. Does it work every time? Does it work every time? Does it lo does it work for a longer period of time? Yeah. Because some sometimes uh, when something works for an hour, we say okay, it works. Yeah. But how about Le Mans Twenty Four that you have? Uh, to um, ride your car as a as a uh, racing uh, team yeah. within 24 hours within, without any uh, problems. Yeah, it's difficult to measure mm. without actually riding this distance within yeah. this time. Or on the other end of the scale, when you have a space mission, sometimes it takes months or years or even decades, right, for a satellite to go wherever. Yeah, and whatever you put on it needs to work constantly for years or longer yes so you've got to prepare some testing procedure um, sometimes it's not possible to test if something works for 10 years because yes. you sure. will you, you won't have time for that but you have time for simulating 
this environment, for example, mm -hmm. for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like um, special uh, chambers that, m that make this process quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so you are testing this proof of concept on a basic level. On a basic these level tests, still. These tests that are possible within this proof of concept, because mm -hmm. you still have you, you know, a bunch of cables and a bunch of different mechanical things on your yeah. table. And you, for example, want to test if, if it uh, can be used in um, lower temperatures like minus, uh, yeah, yeah. minus uh, 10 degrees, for example. And Celsius. Degrees Celsius, yes. <laughs> um, and you cannot just put these things that yeah. you have open into this uh, environment because you will get to know pretty easily that it won't work. You have to build another level of, uh, of prototype mm -hmm. that is prepared for this test. So uh, would it be okay to say uh, when applying this, these stages, I mean stage three and stage four of the TRL to product development, that would be um, the proof of concept and testing it with a product that might even include um, uh, interviewing potential clients or users to see if this sort of device might even be useful for them? Yes, you can start with it. It's uh, really risky from the perspective of, uh, of an investor because when you invest money in the research on this level, of course, risky is developing the, the product that is... Yeah, there's in, risk, risk involved from the beginning. Yes, but um, if you ask people um, about the proof of concept, you have to know how to ask questions to get the right answers. Yeah, sure. Because if you ask questions about, do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's a whole different uh, subject for us to talk about how to perform such interviews and, yes. and, and research. So you've got to ask questions more of the f usability mm. or the, the need functionality or, or the need. Yeah. Yes. So you can test it uh, in the in the proof of concept stage, but uh, it's pretty difficult because people tend to uh, look at it as it was a finished idea. Uh, and you have to make sure that they understand yeah. it's not a finished one. It's just the beginning of the of the road. Yeah, yeah, sure. So what would be after level four when the technology leaves the laboratory or we have a proven uh, concept of a product that we believe uh, is uh, possible to build, will work and people will probably want to buy it or use it. What's, mm -hmm. what's level five? Level five is taking this thing out of a laboratory, basically. So doing the same, but outside of an, a controlled environment? Yes. So, so you, you've learned how to control the local environment for this device mm. or for this idea. Because um, an example in, um, in the real world, the material world, might be 3D printing out of um, metal powder. Okay. So you've got this technology that you can 3D print in a environment that the printer uh, is placed into the, I don't know, maybe argon chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got this um, clear space that you don't have any um, any problems within the atmosphere, mm. within the pressure, mm. within all the different very, aspects. That, very controlled yes, environment. Yes, very con controlled environment. And now you have to place this 3D printer in a regular space yeah. where just people work. And it and, should work too. And it should work too. <laughs> yeah. And now you have different bunch of problems to solve. Yeah, okay. Because you've got... So you're no, no longer uh, sort of fighting with just the basic concept uh, challenges, but uh, with some um, environment and user challenges, probably. Yes. But when speaking of technology, uh, it's usually 
a small tweaking of tech of of the uh, of the the whole system that you have already um, that you've already designed. But this small t tweaking might take a lot of time. Yeah. Because you've you when you take the device or the idea, the proof of concept, the, the first prototype, and so on and so forth, out of the laboratory. There is a term that you don't know what you don't know. Mm, yeah. You have to discover what the problem will be. You are not. It is not possible to predict, to predict all, all the problems yeah. that you will uh, that you will be facing. So this is this is something uh, that when you take the idea out of the lab laboratory, you need to spend more time on developing this idea out of it, out of this safe environment yeah so with product design would that be testing a prototype with uh, users or would it be just what, what how would it translate to a product development yes it might be testing it with users it might be testing the initial uh, in initial concepts of uh, of some specific uh, requirements for the for the device, maybe something that um, that is good to describe is about uh, waterproofness. Okay, because when you have the device, the prototype that you want to be waterproof, mm -hmm. you can sort of test it in laboratory. Yeah, uh, let's compare it to, to this environment from from NASA <laughs> into the product development. You can have a laboratory environment mm -hmm. like a mm, still water sitting on the table mm -hmm. in a bowl yeah. and you place your proto your first prototype on TRL number um, four yeah. into this bowl and you check for some some time. Yeah. Then if it leaks, take it yeah. out and you, you see if it leaks, if it's if it's okay. Mm -hmm. If it's okay. You can assume that this will work outside, mm. but it's just a, in, an assumption. Yeah, sure. Because taking this outside makes some changes. For example, um, you want to put this uh, little thing that you have already designed into the sea. Yeah. And now you've got salt. Yeah. You've got moving water. Yeah. Because the, the water flows on, mm. on your on your device, you can steer, of course, your, your device in, in, in this uh, um, in this laboratory environment. But it's not the same. Yeah, sure. Um, the temperature of the water is different. Yeah. The temperature varies, and mm. because there are some um, different um, different uh, there are gradients of temperature in the water. Yeah. So that this part is once a little bit bigger, it's microscopic change, yeah, it's but right. yeah. it might be bigger, might be smaller. And here it is waterproof, yeah. here it isn't. It shrinks and, it has... and expands and uh, yes. pressure might change. Yes, so there are a lot of different small things that might impact yeah, your so, water. So in general, that would mean that um, you sort of repeat the same types of Law of laboratory test, but outside of the laboratory, often in conditions that would be very difficult to do in a laboratory, or simply economically wouldn't make sense, and needs to be, and they need to be tested, well, in real life, exactly, or with real users, exactly. So, once you've finished these uh, these tested these tests, you can say that you are on TRL number five because you are not on particular TRL until you reach all the requirements requirements so, okay. for this TRL. It's a badge to earn. Yes, it's a badge to earn. Yeah, okay. So um, we, then we go to TRL 6 with laboratory tests, okay? Environment and user tests, okay? What's next? Mm, the next is something that is hard to understand in terms of a product because okay. on TRL number five we've got component validation mm -hmm. in relevant environment 
And on TRL number six, it's a system or subsystem demonstration in relevant environment. So okay, so sort of with product development that would be together with uh, TRL five. We can five and six. Yes, we can think of merging it because um, we cannot think of a prototype without all the parts assembled together. But we can um, we can understand it like this. For example, we've got one project uh, that has to comply with IP fifty four. So um, we had to be sure that all the spaces that are between different parts needs to be IP54. Yeah, okay. So when we try to test or when we try to test the first uh, prototype for this, uh, mm -hmm. for this IP rate, it was difficult because we didn't know where the leak was because we we had two spaces. Okay. We had one space uh, under the button of the device and one space between the halves of, uh, of the enclosure. Okay. And we didn't know where the actual leak uh, was happening because it was leaking, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. as the first prototype. Um, so we jumped into our software and uh, made different kind of prototypes for testing different parts of uh, ceiling. So one prototype tested only the mm. uh, the enclosure itself, the two halves of the enclosure. So the button that was on the top was um, merged with the top case so that we had only one space to test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this prototype was testing a part or a component. Yeah. The second prototype was testing the button only. Uh, how does this uh, perform? And when we are speaking about TRL number six, we have to merge it. So we have to test both the button and the, and the enclosure. Mm -hmm. If this meets our standards or our needs or the IP rate, then we are on TRL yeah. number six. Okay. We have the system. Yeah, yeah. So test it. Uh, it might be applicable uh, directly. For example, a product would consist of uh, several important parts integrated into a system like you would need to test I don't know a a welder part that is on a motion arm for example you need to test several elements separately and then test them together in a system sort of yes okay mm, so uh, number five is testing a component level six is testing that and other components within a system yes. so that would be a entire the entire device in, in in our case and we're close we're getting closer to the end of the scale so what would be at level seven um i will uh, return to it but i would like to add that in our understanding sometimes system and subsystem yeah. might be also understood as assembly and sub assembly yeah because we we are 99% in the material world. So yeah. we are talking about products, the physical ones. So we are talking and speaking about assemblies. So this okay. is a component or a part and then testing the sub-assembly or the whole assembly. Okay. Uh, but jumping to back to, 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 to the scale, now we've got level seven and now the problem appears because we've got the system prototype in a space environment. Uh, so testing in a space environment. Yeah, so that would be probably testing a product, uh, a prototype that is no longer no longer a proof of concept, no longer a crude version of the idea, but something much closer to the final product and testing it again in true environment with users. Would that be yes. more or less it? Um, we can we can name uh, we can put uh, or, or uh, delete the the word of space yeah and put people <laughs> into it oh. because because people um, are just as deadly as, as space yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say that but people are the best judges of the quality especially if you are designing for children okay 
children are the best destroyers in the world. So yeah. once you give them the thing that you design for them, if it's destroyed within 10 minutes, it's not a toy that okay. we would like to, to manufacture. So I guess children should be the next Marvel villain. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we can we can translate space for uh, uh, so, so take out the space word and place it into into the people space. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, it seems like uh, uh, which is natural, but I'll just state it: the further we are in the scale, the more detailed tweaks we are actually doing. Uh, the mm, the on the technology itself, at least, because it seems more about um, usability, form, uh, will it hold up to time and uh, uh, constant usage, for example. Um, after we test, after we have something that we can test with the final users in, in some larger uh, groups at level seven, um, what would be level eight? Because it seems that we're almost there. Um, yes, it seems like we are almost there, but still there are improvements to make. Yeah. Uh, on each step, on each level, uh, you can learn something new. Uh, speaking of, of the uh, usage time of the product life cycle, speaking of the, the materials that we are using, sometimes we are using the materials that are just a representation of the materials that are going to be used. Okay. So sometimes you had you have to. It depends. It, it doesn't have to happen all the time. Yeah. But it happens that you have to make the prototype out of the materials that are going to be the end materials. Mm -hmm. So you are you still do not have tooling. You still do not have all this thing all these things around manufacturing but you need to have the product sort of the prototype mm -hmm. that is made out of the same materials yeah so you can say that it is something already proven to behave like you expect it to behave mm -hmm. within the, these materials that you are using you cannot test materials for longevity um, without having the same materials used. Mm -hmm. um, if you build a car out of a out of clay or the the, 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 the exterior out of the clay, yeah. you won't be able to make it as thin as sheet metal yeah, and sure. still having the form. You have to jump into the right technology. Mm -hmm. Mm, if you are building a prototype of a cup, you cannot make it out of paper yeah. without any sort of glue or things that make it waterproof. Mm. It will it will just be destroyed in a few minutes. And of course, people like the form, people like the weight, which might be the problem because paper is yeah. pretty, pretty light. light. And if you want to uh, make sure that people still like it, if it's more heavy, for example, you have to make it out of material that enables you to test this little particular thing like weight. So, 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 uh, so level eight would be making basically getting as close as possible to the final thing, to the final product without, uh, assembly line, production line, and all the tooling necessary, yes. right? Yes. Okay, so you could say that at the end of level level eight, you have the golden sample? Um, yes, we can call it, but still we have to remember that we have reached this level after com after completing these tests. Yeah, sure. So, so at the end of this process, you can say that you have this and you're at level eight. Yes, we are at level eight. So yeah. if we are speaking of TRL, mm -hmm. we, uh, TRLs, 
we still have one step forward. And this step is, in this scale, it's written uh, like actual system fl flight proven through successful mission operations, yeah. which is still hard to understand in product development stages, mm -hmm. but we can call it like the, like the MVP, for example. So we've got the minimum viable product Mm, or, or we can understand it also as a batch of prototypes that yeah. we are sending to our future customers uh, for further tests. But these are still prototypes. Uh, the, the, you're talking about after getting to level eight, or are you? Yes, after getting after. to level eight. Okay. Uh, in in perfect world. Uh, that's how Kickstarter wanted to, to work. Okay. So that people have ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, they are sharing they are their ideas on early stages because they don't know what's the demand for their idea. And Kickstarter was meant to um, participate in this idea making possible <laughs> okay so they wanted um they wanted the people who invented something or who who, who thought that the, their idea might be good to uh, to market so they wanted to test it and they um, had some backers these backers were the privileged people to have the first batch of products um so that they can test it and then uh, spread the word mm. uh, about the this product this is how a lot of youtubers work this is how a lot of instagrammers work they yeah. work on future products that are going to be marketed and when we when we hear about it uh, there are usually some uh, disclosures in these videos or in these uh, threads like okay it's just a sample it's not a manufacturing ready product that's why because people want to know about the product before it's manufactured yeah it's good for the manufacturer or the the idea maker and it's good for clients because clients don't want to buy things that are not already tested. Mm. Mm, there are, of course, early adopters uh, that uh, are buying everything that, yeah. they, that is new, but it's not the mass. These are hundreds or thousands of people in a particular market that want to test something, even if it doesn't work perfectly. Yeah, sure. But uh, if we are speaking of a mass, uh, mass manufactured product, we have to make sure that it's, as it said, flight proven. If I understand correctly, then after we reach that uh, level, the final level of the TRL scale in regards to product development, we have a product that is not yet mass produced. So it's like a small batch of prototypes that has been tested by real users and we have as much of a certainty that we can, that we're ready for mass production. So only after that, we sort of get out of the TRL scale and we go to manufacturers, we think about tooling and other aspects. Uh, yes, we can of course think of the tooling a little bit earlier when we have TRL number eight, for example. And after completing the TRL number nine, uh, maybe we can tweak the tooling, we can tweak the process, we can tweak the process of injection molding, for example, because we know that, on, that we have a certain quality of our uh, products, of our uh, parts of the product, mm. but uh, people, for it's, it's just an example, people tend not to like this surface finish that we have on, on okay. a particular part. Because they say that it's uh, finger, uh, not finger resi fingerprints resistant. Yeah. Um, maybe it's uh, difficult to clean. Something that is 
something we haven't thought about. That, that we haven't thought about or we have thought, but it doesn't work in the real world. Yeah, okay. Like people, uh, if you think of, of, uh, of a mobile phone, for example, all the manufacturers want to make phones beautiful, uh, slim, yeah. uh, neatly looking uh, pieces of technology and we still need to put them into rubber cases. Yeah. Because this is what we want. We want to be sure that when the phone drops, it will still be a phone, yeah. not a piece of technology that is not working with yeah. you, for you. So um, people are okay when the beautifulness of the phone is covered. Okay, yeah. And for some reason, uh, we are still buying these yeah. two things separately and there is no one that is going to deliver you a phone within the case yeah in a one uh, in a one uh, product yeah. because it's called rugged phone and it's ugly <laughs> yeah sure. and people do not like ugly things when buying premium products they want to to think that they've got something beautiful but still covered yeah yeah okay so uh I guess that would be it, because level 9 is the last one, right? So from the basic concept of just a thought, all the way up to having a tested, validated prototype with final users in real environment, with all the tweaks you can imagine, uh, when you're ready to basically go to the manufacturer and work on your production line. Yes. In the beginning, it seemed quite confusing, the, uh, especially translating the technology readiness sort of to product development or product readiness. But as we've talked from the very first level, just a thought of a possibility to up to having a prototype that's tested in all the possible ways with final users in the final environment um, and basically being ready just to go to the manufacturer to prepare your production line. That's what TRL is and that's how we use it in the design world and, world and engineering world to communicate with institutions and with clients uh, in order to, um, like we said, manage expectations sort of, but also get a firm fundament of what, that we understand each other basically, yeah? Yes, uh, going back to basics, TRL scale was meant to, to serve the high complexity things that are made in a low scale, <laughs> at a low scale. Okay. So as we understand, products are not so complex as the space technologies, but they are made in higher scale. You mean uh, volume? Or volume, yeah. yes. So. The, that's why the TRL scale is understood by us as a design studio and institution, institutions like research and development centers, like the some kind of prototyping stages. We cannot say that level nine is a ready to market uh, product within all the supply of tooling, mm. the manufacturers and so on. So. What you've said is, is true, but I wanted to mention or to add this information to, to complete maybe the, yeah. the, this, this, sure. this, this definition. Okay. Will I help? Uh, well, I hope if anyone had doubts about the TRL scale or, or was just curious about it, uh, I hope this conversation helped someone understand it better. It certainly did help me, even though we did prepare for this talk. Uh, still, it was, uh, it was confusing. Um, but now everything is clear. Yeah, cool. Nice Here's talking to you, Mikhail. Good to know. Thank okay. you.